just piled them up. Something awful. Stu Bowman's run through St. Petersburg, interrupted by a tough sight. Here, I really haven't seen a pile quite like that. Uh, the smell is, you know, formidable. Dead fish. These in Bayborough Harbor, where we even spotted rays and sharks. St. Pete's deputy mayor tweeting crews collected around six tons of dead fish along shorelines and waterways the past week. Efforts they'll continue. Earlier this morning, there was also a loggerhead turtle that, that was discovered out here. Uh, so we're just continuing to see reports of significant amounts of dead fish up and down uh, the coast of Tampa Bay, unfortunately. Maya Burke is with the Tampa Bay Estuary Program. We're not really seeing uh, significant uh, trends in terms of low dissolved oxygen. And so this points to uh, brevitoxins that are the result of the, that that are the result of these high concentrations of red tide that are killing these these fish species. FWC says it's possible recent wind and rains could have exacerbated fish kills from water quality changes or bloom conditions, or winds and currents could have concentrated dead fish in certain areas. They're sampling to learn more. People on this beach tell us they've seen some dead fish too. Pinellas County says water quality testing showed high levels of red tide at Treasure Island and Pasigro. The county says there are no beach closures though. We're seeing a, a wide range of, of uh, various marine life that's impacted by this kill. We turn to USF Stephen Morosky, a fisheries biologist. It takes a while for this to work itself out so we're likely to see more fish kills or at least a, a, a a push of, of dead fish onto the beach for a while until basically we get um, uh, either the bloom, you know, uses the nutrients in the water because it, it, it thrives on the nitrogen that's in the water. And so uh, eventually these blooms play themselves out. In Pinellas County, Haley Bull, ABC Action News.